where's the camera? I need to be, where's the camera? Is this live? Wait, one second, it's not live yet. We need to be live on that. I don't want to be live. You live? You live? Okay. Because I, I want to talk to the people out there. I want to talk to the people out there. You live yet? What's the tech guru? Tech, tech, tech guru? Are we live? I need to go. You live? All right, so we, we want to talk to as many people as we can out there. That's the goal. The goal is to get the word out to the people out there. We good? Okay, so now that we got some people we're going to be looking at, I'm going to teach y'all some technique. I'm going to teach y'all a way of truly Truly, 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 as the Queen Mother here said, getting into your Zen. But we, we want to go, you know, into our Zen, into ourselves, into our higher selves, and fulfill a much deeper capacity of who we are. As you heard Steve and Dr. Miles Monroe and Denzel Washington talking about getting, you know, manifesting that gift that gift manifesting it. So I learned some techniques over the years of how to manifest your true state of power. How to own the room when you walk in the room. How to completely encapsulate the audience and allow them to see you as the man with the plan, the man with the answer, the man with the clue, the man who can bring about change, it's truly just manifesting and owning your true power. So in order to do that, we gotta start with this word called, follow me here. self-awareness. One of the reasons why we fall victim to distractions, one of the reasons why we fall victim to a non-disciplined life, one of the reasons why we fall victim to circumstances and things that just seems like, why me? Why it happened to me? One of the reasons why we fall victim to no structure and no order it's simply because we're not aware of who we are. If we are aware of who we are, then what happens is you know exactly where you belong, you know exactly what you should be doing, you know exactly everything that needs to be happening in your life at that moment. You don't have to question, where do I belong right now? Where, where do I need to be? Do I need to be engaging in this and engaging in that? As, as you heard Steve said, if you cut hair, why are you doing anything else? You must be aware of yourself and understand that if, if I am a teacher, why am I trying to manifest other things, diminishing, and, 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 and diminishing and weakening my strength over here? Because I am focused on other things over here, it's weakening my strength over here, which if I just work on this one strength that I have, I can become a monster player in that game, in that field, in that industry. I can become a monster player, a giant in that field. And this is how you carve a path for you. This is how you end up carving a path for you because you're walking, as I said in, in meditation earlier, I said, I see me in the ocean and the ocean is moving, but the moment I step in the ocean, the ocean is moving before me because I am in sync with that energy. And as I walk into the ocean, the ocean goes before me. I don't have to kick the water and move it before me. It's moving for me, before me. Because I am in sync with the energy in that water that it just allows me to just flow like I'm not in the water. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. It allows me to feel like I'm walking not in the water. I'm flowing, but there's no water resistance. 
because I'm so in tune and become one with the water in that moment. Now what happens in the water, what happens in life, when you are aware of your true self, your true gift, your power, that same thing happens. Things move for you, they flow for you. And you're carving out this niche, this path, to where people start to say, you know, that's a tough industry to get into. How did he catch a break? Well, he just kept carving the way. He kept carving through that path and everything was moving out the way for him because the water knew he was coming. The water felt him enter. The water felt him enter in. And he became one with that. It was a, it was a graceful entrance. And so he became one with that energy. And when you become one with that energy inside that space of what you do best, you don't have to force nothing to happen. Things begin to move because you're moving with an energy that goes before you. And it's carving out a niche. And it's carving out a way. It's carving out a path. And so that's what happens when you are aware of your true self. When I became aware of who I was, no longer did I need to try and become other things. And I don't allow people to try and ask me to do other things that's outside of the realm of who I am. I won't. I, I don't fit into it. Now, I can be multi-talented in a lot of areas, but it's going to still fall back in line with whatever it is, it's going to be educational. I am multi-talented in a lot of areas. I'm multi-talented, not in just talking. I love to cook, but what do I do with cooking? I make it a teaching moment. I make my food educational. So it always falls back to my true strength. My true strength is, what am I, who am I? My true strength is teaching, educating, enlightening the people. And so, I'm going to break something down to you because I want you to get this through meditation. And I'm going to take you through a practice. That if you practice this, you won't fail. You will not fail. And I practice this all the time. And one thing that the Bible says that I always take out of the Bible. The Bible says that we must love thy neighbor as we love who? Thyself. Thyself first, all right? So in order to love thy neighbor, we have to know how to love ourselves. So the Bible is saying, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. So you cannot love anyone if you don't know how to love yourself. And so we must start with the self first. And it may seem, it may seem egotistical to people. It may seem uh, cocky and obnoxious and people say you arrogant. That's going to come with that. Because people are going to see how much you love yourself. That you put yourself before others. Others who don't love themselves. Others who don't love themselves. You're putting yourself before them. Trying to teach them to love themselves through you loving yourself. I'm going to teach you a practice. I always start out the day with a meditation. I call it, follow me here, okay? I call it me time. I got to have me time. Day, every day I got to have me time. Now me time is an acronym because I, I use it as a practice. Now. What this is going to enlighten you on is stepping into your true, it's, it's stepping and being your true self. In the morning, or I like to say sunrise, I start my day off with number one, huh, meditation. I always start the day off with a meditation, going into a silence, quiet in the noise, I allow myself to just be able to think, close my eyes, I shut the windows, I cut up the lights, and I just light the candles, and I do what I need to do to bring that power, to remind myself. Meditation is a continual reminder or a practice that is a continual reminder of how to elevate more in what you already are. So you're using meditation to elevate 
more into what you already are. And you're just seeing yourself in that. You're seeing yourself in those moments. There was a talk I did that talked about what causes a lot of travel sickness, climate sickness, environmental sickness, and allergy sickness. And a lot of that is because we have not acclimated ourselves. We have not acclimated ourselves. And in meditation is where you go to acclimate yourself. So when I know that I'm going to travel to a certain country, I don't wait till I get to the country to arrive. I arrive in the co- I arrive at the country already here. When I get there, I've already acclimated myself to the smells, to the sights, to the sounds. Through study, through research, through eating the food, through immersing myself. I've already acclimated myself. So when I get there, I'm not sick from the climate or the environment. I'm not getting allergies from certain foods I've never eaten before. Because I'm here doing my acclimation now. Through meditation, you can rid yourself of all kinds of sickness. You can do that. And this is why I always talk about how, like, I am, I call myself the natural man. Hence why I don't cut my hair no more. I I just try to live my most natural, fulfilled life. And I don't, I, I, I don't put chemicals in my body. I don't do anything to harm my natural body. I want it to be its most powerful self. You know, I used to go to the gym and work out, and I learned you're not supposed to put weight on your muscles like that. So I stopped going to the gym. I left it alone just because. And I used to feel joint pain anyway, so I, I'm glad I left it alone. But when I learned that, the, that if you just learn about the natural body and you learn what to give it, your body, your body will go back into balance all on its own. You don't have to force nothing. It will go back into balance all on its own. And this is where you do that. And you do that first through meditation. So I'm always back in. I always come to a balanced state of mind, presence, awareness through meditation. Again, you're using meditation not as a form of mm, trying to be quiet and, mm, and make humming noises and be. It's not that. That's not meditation. Meditation is a tuning. Attuning your life, your, your, your being, your essence, your energy, your aura. It's attuning yourself to the energy in the space that you are about to enter. And it may not just be you're actually physically going to enter into a, a space, like a, a, a building or something. But it's just when you leave that state of mind, when you leave that awareness, that meditation, you're coming back into the reality of this world. And you need that to be able to deal with this. And that's what this does. It allows you to enter into this space and say, I can deal with it. And you learn a lot of things through this method. You learn a lot of things like detachment. Detaching yourself, detaching yourself from the ability of hurt and pain. Not to say we don't grieve and feel compassion. What's your name again? Dennis. Dennis. I know it was Dennis. I, I didn't want to call you Dennis, though, but I, I didn't care if getting it wrong. Can, you, can I grab, get a bottle of water for you, please, sir? Thank you. So, um, but this is what meditation does. It's, it's a unique practice that I discovered two years ago. Now, I was meditating before, but didn't know I was meditating because I wasn't into it yet. But... I was meditating, not knowing I was meditating many a times. But when I started to wake myself up to it, I became more aware. So, this is your first practice in the morning. You gotta have your me time. And your first practice is meditation. Now, what is meditation? Easily explained, simple. It's just getting alone, sitting down, and being quiet. But meditation ain't only that. You can find meditation in the great, if you're a painter and you love to paint, that's meditation. If you're a poet and you love to write, that's meditation. If you are a, a, you like to run for exercise, that's meditation. You can find yourself in that meditation, but it's basically getting alone with your thoughts. Not allowing your thoughts to take over the time but you just getting along with them, being able to hear yourself think. 
been able to hear your thoughts. In poetry, when I write some of my, my spoken word poetry, I go into a space where I don't allow myself to think, but I allow the words to just come. And the words come because I'm in a state of meditation already now. Once I go into, oh, I got this poem, I want to write it, and it's coming to me, I can feel it, I can really feel it. And it's a dope poem, I know it's going to be dope. I don't force words on paper. They come to me because I'm in a deep state trance of meditation, and that's where it happens at. In meditation, you should be working on, hold on. It's hard writing upside down. Oh, straight up vertical. Exhalation. Exhale. Learning to control your breathing patterns. Learning to control one of the universal laws is the law of rhythm. Do you understand that your breath is a, is a rhythmic beat that is in tune with, with, with life itself? Your breath is beat is on a pattern. Your breath is a part of a universal pattern, a, a rhythmic sound, a melody. So if you control, if you learn how to control your breathing throughout the, throughout the day, whatever you do, you can control your world. Controlling your breathing controls your world. You understand what I'm saying? Controlling your breathing controls your world. Because in a fast-paced world, in a fast-paced world we live in, what happens? We get, we get anxious. We get ants, we get frantic, we start getting frustrated. You know, why is this person not moving fast enough? Why are you not driving fast enough? Get out the way. Stop all that. That has nothing to do with you. You need to realize that. You need to realize that has nothing to do with you. Regardless of what's going on, it has nothing to do with you. If you learn how to control your breathing, you realize it has nothing to do with my personal space, it has nothing to do with me. But you make it all about, you make it to do with you. You make these situations in life when you're in traffic and you wonder why traffic is moving too slow. You just you just invited yourself into a problem that was not even yours. You just given yourself a problem that you shouldn't even. Now what do you do? You cause yourself stress that that don't belong to you. But we bring it on ourselves. We bring that stuff on ourselves. We literally bring it on ourselves. When we say it was their fault, but no, you brought it on yourself. You bring it on yourself. So we must learn to control our breathing patterns and get back in tune with the rhythm of life because the rhythm of life is the breath. The rhythm of life is the breath. The breath is the rhythm of life when we're breathing. Deep inhalation breaths in the nose. Through the mouth. In meditation, you're controlling that breathing as well, too. Learning how to control your breathing. Learning how to control your breath. Now, when you get anywhere in a situation, and it's really, when you start to panic and it's starting to get heavy for you, you got to remember to breathe. You can check yourself and literally feel your tensed up. And my breathing is shallow. I'm not taking deep breaths. You stop for a moment, tune out to the noise, go within, because going within is the way out. So you go within and you just breathe. Allow that deep breath to just sit in your lungs. Expand yourself. And then release yourself. You'll feel good about everything going on around you because you realize none of that has anything to do with me. I'm breaking on stress I don't even need. It's not for me. Breathing, 
it then transforms me, my being, into, and I step into a new being. This is what it actually means to live multiple lives. When you hear people say that, you know, I've lived many lives. Yeah, this is true. Because when you you transform into a different being, that's what it literally means to live multiple lives. When you hear people talking like that, yeah, they're living multiple lives. I've lived multiple lives. Why? Because every time I've trans, every time I've come into meditation and I become aware of who I was in the moment, who I am in the moment, I stepped into a new role of myself, a higher role, most likely an elevated role, is where I want to be. I stepped into a new role of life. I've transformed myself. I've transformed. information taking from those thoughts taking from all this and just using that as information because our DNA is made up of information and so when we are in tune to our highest thoughts we're getting a lot of information computed imputed into us and we can go into meditation and we can come out of meditation having lost all of what we were getting. But if we go into meditation and immediately just continue to practice breathing, transforming, taking that information out, hearing what that information is, because the root word, the, etym the, etym the root etym etymological word of the word awareness is information. It is to be made informed of something. This is the root word of awareness. You look up awareness and you'll see the root word of it is information. So when you become self-aware, you become aware of new information. New information is what's causing this change. New information is what's causing the new being. New information is what's causing the sense of awareness. You understand what I'm saying? New information. And then me, Parker guy, races on time. It's like, wait, how you do that? Yeah. Right? So, information, taking this and and becoming more aware. We we I talk about the higher self all the time. I talk about the higher self all the time. Right? call it elevation, evolving, and what's the other one? Mm, I may be losing that one. It'll come to me. But it's, it's elevation, it is evolving, and there's something else. I'll remember it in a minute. Probably when I run through this, I'll remember it. But, but it's, it's these three E's. Okay? It's these three D's. It'll come to me. So now we got new information that come in. New information has come in. Now we get into our power. Now we move into our space. And we own and dominate that space. Because we took in the information. We've transformed. Then we take the information. And what do we do with the information now? We use the information, we don't just let it stay there, right? We gotta use that information, that new information that come in, that made you a new being. So when we take that information, what do we do? We have to become what? We have to now... Manifestation. We're manifesting now into all of that which we been working ourselves up to. Manifesting that power. Now, that information that you've been made aware of, that information has transformed itself into your very essence, into your very being. Why? Because you literally, you literally have genetically changed the information. You genetically changed the information. And you become 
that which you are talking about trying to become. Whatever it is your pursuit, whatever it is your desires may be, you become that because now the information has been made new to you through meditation and you manifest it now. You're manifesting in it and you you are now metamorphically changing into that. You are literally changing into that. So when you step out into the world, people look at you and say, well, you changed. Yeah, I did. I actually did change. That's what they're looking at you like. And they should see a change. They should see a change. People should not be able to look at you and see the same person. You know, we get stuck on this, this ideology that change is a bad thing. Change is actually the only thing, change is the only constant in life. It's the only thing that's consistent, change in life. Things are going to change. You might as well change with them. But when you don't change and life is continuing to move and change and evolve, you are going against the cycle and you're resisting. And when you go against that cycle causing the resistance, what happens? There's a pull. You're, you're, you're pulling now on this cycle of life and you're pulling on a natural cycle. The world is going this way. You're going this way, trying to stay the same. And now that, that, that's an actual tug of war that's happening. Because you're going, he's going that, that, the world is going that way, you're going this way. So it's a tug of war now. Because, look, because the world is naturally a gravitational pull. I spoke about this earlier in the video I did. The natural world is made up of gravity, is a gravitational pull. It means it's always pulling. The world is always pulling. You understand? Your body is always absorbing the sun. That's a pull. The soil is always absorbing the rain. That's a pull. This is gravitational. Life is gravitational. It's a pull. And so when life is trying to pull you into who you're supposed to be, and you're like, no, 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 you're, you're causing a tug of war to happen. And you're going against that, and you're causing resistance. <clears throat> and so therefore, you don't manifest what you're supposed to become. But if you get into that natural flow of life, you can manifest all that you're supposed to become. And here's what you want to do after that. Once you come into your power, once you come into your true power, once you manifest that, guess what? Guess what has to happen now? Must, it's expiration. It's time to expire now. You got to <clears throat> expire yourself. You're like, what? All this work for this? And all of a sudden you want me to just kill it? Like, deaden it right now? Like, yes, you got to expire yourself. To truly continue to grow and evolve. To truly evolve. I remember that third evening, but it ain't there yet. I ain't got it yet. To truly evolve, to truly elevate, let me see if I wrote it on this board. I might have written it on this board. No, I didn't write it on this board. Okay. To truly evolve is to expire yourself. You're going to be like, I spent all these years manifesting in myself, becoming this great power, <coughs> becoming this person. I like to use the Bible as a reference because I read it for so long. I know it back to front and I studied it for a while. And I use the Bible me metaphorically, not allegorically, but metaphorically. And, 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 I, and when I use the Bible, it's just to make a reference because the, the the ideal is to ascend. The ideal is to ascend into our higher self. We want to ascend to our higher self, right? This is the ideal. We want to become the highest version of ourselves. The ideal is to ascend. So the Bible says what? Jesus said, if any man wants to 
come after me. Let him pick up his cross and die to himself. Let him pick up his cross and die to himself and follow me. You must die to yourself to sit on the throne, to sit at the highest seat of, of, of your higher self. You must die to yourself. You're, you have to expire. You have to expire because, you see, God, this all this this ever this ever loving eternal presence, which is what I equate God as, ever loving eternal presence. God is not broke, but God also is not rich. God is not in need of anything. So why do you feel the need to have to take all that you gain from here, come over here and gain more, and then come over here and gain more? Because once you are, once you are at the mountaintop, you got no more ceiling. There's no more growth. You capped yourself off. You're at the mountaintop and you've capped yourself off. This is your, 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 your growing stops here. Your growing stops right here. Because you've reached the mountaintop and you feel it's safe to stay at the top of the mountain. But you are not growing anymore. The growing stops at the top. So you must do what? You must kill yourself. You must expire, in a sense, expire all that you thought you knew and evolve to elevate. Okay? We want to ascend. And so the rich young ruler asked Jesus, how must I get into the how must I get into the kingdom of heaven? The rich young ruler asked Jesus, how do I get into the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said what? You must sell all your things and come follow me. You can get into the kingdom of heaven. But what happened? The rich young ruler went away. He couldn't do it. He couldn't find himself selling his stuff. He couldn't let go of his possessions. You know why? Because to be God, to be in all, to be, to be all that you are and supposed to be, to be all powerful, to be God, you don't need riches there with you. To be God, you don't need money there with you. To be God, you don't need possessions. Because God is everything. You see, I have. I try so hard to have nothing. You hear what I said? I, I learn and study on how to have nothing. Because when I do that, I learn I got everything. When I study how to have nothing, I got everything. When I study how to have nothing. Do you understand that the world teaches us the reverse? That in having nothing, you have everything. But they teach us in having everything, we don't need for nothing. But do you find rich people who got everything, they still always want more? Because they don't have everything. There's always more. But when you realize that you, when you realize and you get rid of trying to have everything, and you and you opt out for having nothing, then do you have everything? You realize you are one with it all. It's all one with you. You own it all. It don't own you, but you are one with it all. You are you have it all. But we must expire. Expiration. We got to expire. So that we can start the process of growth again and come into a new being. Awareness. Self-awareness. Which is information. New information. We want to come into new information. All the time. And we can't do that at the top of the mountain. We can't do that sitting at the top. We gotta expire. And this is what it means to res be resurrected. This is what it means to be living, living multiple lives. Because you expire the self. You exp all that you learned and knew and grabbed and became powerful in and manifested yourself in, now you gotta expire it. Because you've mastered it. And this is what it means. I identify myself as an ascended master. To be an ascended master is to be the highest form of yourself. It's to know that you don't need for nothing and everything, and you got everything. It's to know that you don't have to ask for nothing, everything comes to you. See, I'm an ascended master, and that's how I identify myself as. I am the highest version of, of who I am and I can be. But I always allow myself to expire. And so I always come out 
I always come out. You understand? I always come out, reemerge, or I always come out on um, emerging a new being, a new vessel, a new body, a new mind, a new thought. Uh, everything is so new. Everything is new now because I manifested myself into my greatest version of what I needed to be for that time. I've acclimated myself and my being for what I needed for that moment, for that time, for that year, for that whatever, however long. And once I'm done with that, I expire. And so you hear things like this, because I've heard it. You hear things like this. Yo, bro, like, what you got going on new today? Like, you always doing something new, like, I heard this before, coming from family members that would say to me sometimes, like, last year it was this, this year's that, the year before you was doing that, but what else are you doing now? And I look at him and I, I used to get bothered by that before, but I don't get bothered by it now because I'm like, it's purposely done now. I do it on purpose now. I, I purposely kill the self to become a new being. I do that on purpose. So next year you may see me, I may still be teaching this, but I may look totally different. There may be another aura about me. There's gonna be a whole other aura you feel, a vibe, and a presence that you get with me. Because I'm coming to a new being, a new sense of awareness and information. You understand? And third, he ain't coming to me yet, but I forgot what it was, but we still gonna, you know, understand that this is how you evolve, how you elevate. You understand? This is a process of elevation. I'm hoping that I'm teaching you something here. Y'all learn anything here? Yeah. Because this, <clears throat> this is power. And you see, Someone like me, who's about to hit the road teaching this next month. I'm gonna be doing this until I leave here. Why? Because I look, I want, I search to continue to inspire myself. I want to expire myself. I don't want to stay in the same information. Therefore, I have to expire. I don't want to stay in the same information. Therefore, I have to expire. So I look forward to it. I look forward to expiring all that I knew for the time I got it and needed it for. So I seek to expire on that in order to move into new information, a new self-awareness. This is what it means to be highly enlightened. You understand what I'm saying? And I think that's what my third word was, enlightened. Okay? So, I'm going to teach you how to meditate real quick. We only we do like two, three minutes of it. Y'all down with that? Yes. I'm going to show you how to really, can you, can you, can you turn the lights on? No, no lights on. We just want to use the lights as a target. We don't have the lights on. Okay. You took notes. Anybody took notes? I'm just making sure I don't erase them. Yeah. So let's let's practice a form of meditation. gonna listen to my voice because people are like this people like to think meditation is something people like to think meditation is you can um yeah 